You know, there's a myth in American culture that you can become whatever you want to be. It's the belief that people are like putty. They can be shaped or reshaped to become whatever it is they want to be. If they want to conform to their employer's expectations or maybe to family expectations or maybe even to their own personal expectations, whatever they are, they can just work and work and work, work on their weaknesses and they can get better and become whatever it is that people want them to be. Now, the problem with this is that this expectation is generally always based on other people's visions for you. And it's a belief that if you just simply work harder and develop your weaknesses, you will get better and become whatever it is that people want you to be. But the result, almost always you end up frustrated and feeling like a failure. Is there a better way? Yeah, there is a better way. Discover and live your story, your God-given design. Hey, welcome to TEB Talk. My name is Dr. Tracy Barnes, and I'm so glad you're joining me today. Hey, listen, if this content that I've been doing is helpful, I would love for you to subscribe and become a part of this family and the journey that we're all on, and also to hit that like button so that these particular videos, the content goes out to a greater and wider audience. Well, today we're talking about your story, your God-given design, because the reality is this, and you need to understand this. You have a unique story. You have a unique way of doing life. The Bible says in Psalms 139, thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. You and I have been designed by God to be the people that we are, and we are unique from everyone else. I like to use the word story because truly you and I are creating a story, our unique stories, based on the unique God-given design that each of us has. Now, you also need to understand that this unique design, well, it's enduring, meaning that it appears early in life and it stays with you right to the end of your life. This unique design is irrepressible. It's instinctive. You're going to do it no matter what because it's a part of you. And here's the good news. It's also knowable. There are certain patterns that reoccur again and again in your life when you're doing those activities that you enjoy and that you believe you do well. And you can see in those patterns certain behaviors that you do instinctively. This is your God-given design, your story. Because your story unveils your destiny. Now, this story that you and I are writing, that is our God-given design, it is built around five motivations. And these motivations occur naturally within you because God's put them there and they're unique to you. It is the things that you love to do, those things that you do well, those things that when you do them, people look at you and go, how did you do that? And you respond by saying, I don't know, I just do it. Well, it's all built around what we call motivated behavior. It is the expression of your God-given design, your story. And today what I want to do is kind of unpack this. We're not going to dive down into the details, but to give you a bigger and broader picture as to what this is about. And I want to use the word story as an acronym to help us understand what these five motivations are. Let me give them to you first, kind of in a very quick fashion, and then we'll dive down into them just a bit. The letter S, that is from the word story, the letter S means strength. That is your motivated abilities, those natural talents and skills. The letter T stands for topics. That is motivated subject matter, the subjects that you are naturally drawn to, the things that just simply turn you on. The O is optimal working conditions. That is those motivating circumstances. And this is very important. These are the ideal conditions in which you function best. 
The R stands for relationships. That is motivated operating relationships. How you best function around people and those in authority. And finally, the letter Y is yes. Yes is that motivated payoff, that singular outcome that you seek seek whenever you're doing something. What you're looking for when you feel that deep sense of accomplishment and satisfaction, the yes. It's all about your story, your God-given design. So let's take a little bit deeper look into each of these five motivated behaviors, beginning with the letter S, strength or motivated abilities. These are the natural abilities that any individual uses to accomplish a desired result. They're abilities that stand out because when you do them, you really don't have to think about it. You just do them. As I said earlier, when people look at you and ask, how did you do that? And you go, I don't know. I just do it. These are those natural talents and abilities that are part of that motivated ability pattern that's in your life. You just do it. Whether it's working with your hands or whether it's creating something new or operating tools and machinery or maybe speaking publicly or teaching, leading, writing, selling. The list is endless, but all of us have natural abilities and talents that we use and we do it instinctively because it's part of our story, our God-given design. Strength, motivated abilities. Then we move to the letter T, topics, that is motivated subject matter. This is the subject matter that we love to work with. We're drawn to it instinctively because, again, it's just a part of who we are. For instance, some people are just naturally drawn to data. They love numbers and statistics or schedules, finances. Data is the thing that turns them on. Others love ideas. They love to gain knowledge. They love to understand laws and how laws work, beliefs, concepts, policies. Others are drawn to people. They love working with people, individuals, groups, cultures, human behavior, psychology, all of it is something they're naturally drawn to. Other people, they're drawn to things like animals or plants or materials, tools that are working with their hands, food or other things of that sort. Whatever that object might be, they love working with that. Others, they're drawn to senses like music, sound, art, color, smells, fragrance, flavor, food, texture, all of the senses are involved and they're drawn to that type of topic. Others, they may be drawn to methods in that they love procedures, models, strategy, tactics, systems, technology. It is something they're just instinctively drawn to and run to. These are the topics that is motivated subject matter. Now, Others, we get to the O, these are the optimal working conditions. That is the motivated circumstances, the ideal conditions in which you do your very best work, where you thrive and function at your best. For some people, that means structure. They like to work in an environment where there's order, predictability, and stability. Others love to work in a circumstance or do what they do where they're visible, where their profile is elevated, where they're standing before others and others are watching what they are doing. Others love to work in environments where they're measures, that is objective standards. There's an assembly line. I've got to create 35, whatever they are. And when I get to 35, I'm doing that. Others love difficulty. They love to operate in circumstances where there's a challenge, where there's a problem to be solved, where there's a difficulty to be overcome. Or others love working in environments where there's variety. It is new. It is changing conditions. There's variety. But again, it is those optimal working conditions, those motivating circumstances where you do your very best work. And then the R, 
This is relationships or motivated operating relationships, how you interact with those around you as well as those in authority. For instance, when we talk about how we relate to those in authority, we all respond differently. Some like to be in a working relationship where it's hands off. You tell me what you want done and then let me go do it and I'll get it done. But I don't want you in there looking over everything I'm doing. It's hands off. Others love a collaborative working environment where they're working with others to accomplish whatever it is. They want to be part of the team. And then there are others who simply, they don't want to be part of the team. They want to be the leader of the team. They lead out. And then we talk about how it is that we relate to others, whether we're a contributor working with that team, whether we're the influencer leading and mo motivating and moving that team forward, or whether we're simply the overseer, we stand back and give vision to everybody. But we're all wired in different ways. We're looking at things from a different set of eyes because we all have a unique story, a unique God-given design. And then finally, when we get to that last letter in the word story, which is why, that's our yes, that motivated payoff, that singular outcome that you as an individual seek whenever you're doing something to feel that deep sense of accomplishment and satisfaction. For instance, some people, whenever they set out to do something, what they're wanting to achieve is achievement. They want to get the job done. They have this deep sense to finish whatever they get started. And if they can't finish it, they feel a deep sense of frustration. They have this drive to get it done and to get it done right. Others, it's all about personal performance. There's a drive to exceed. If the finish line is here, they want to be here. They want to be ahead of everyone else. They're always moving forward. They want to be the best. They want to be key and they want to gain recognition for the fact that they stand out. Then there are others. They, when they're doing whatever they're doing, that yes, that motivated payoff is engaging in the process. They may be working in a project. They don't necessarily need to see it drawn to a finish. But if they can take that project and advance it to the next level, that's where they feel that deep, deep sense of satisfaction, where they can pioneer something and bring it up and bring it forward a notch. Then there are others, when they're seeking to do something, they want to bring about impact or effect. In other words, they have a drive to change. They want to see something and see change in whatever they're doing to make it better in some way, to influence behavior, to gain the reaction from those as they're making a difference in their lives or a difference in the organization or whatever it may be. They want to bring about impact. And then finally, there are those, their yes is taking charge. They have a drive to exercise power. They want to lead. And by the way, when I say exercise power, I don't mean this in a negative way. They just are driven to lead. They want to overcome. They're not motivated unless they have something that's in the way and they've got to go through that obstacle to get to the other side. And when they do, that yes comes into play. Each of these five motivated behaviors, they create our story, our purpose that God has given us. And as I said a minute ago, they're enduring in that they're a part of us from birth and they're with us all the way through to the end of life. And the key thing is they are knowable. And my challenge to you today is to begin to look at your life and ask you, what is my story? What is the subject matter that I'm drawn to? What are those things that I love working with? What are those uh, circumstances where I thrive best? How do I relate to others? What's that singular outcome that I'm looking forward to? You need to know this about yourself because when you do, you can focus your time and energy in these areas. And when you do, this is when you're gonna start finding success and this is when you're going to begin to feel that deep sense of, 
Now I'm doing what God made me to do. I'm living out my destiny. I'm living out my purpose. I'm seeing it and I'm feeling very, very good about myself. It's all about your story, your God-given design. And you and I need to discover and develop that. Let me just add, quit worrying about your weaknesses their weaknesses. And by the way, they will always remain that way. Where you need to focus is your strength, your God-given motivations, those things that drive you from deep within you because God put them there. He made you who you are, and he's now wanting you to live out that design and to make that story, develop that story to his glory. Hey, listen, thanks for joining me today in this session of Teb Talk. So glad you're here. And again, if you're finding this content to be very, very helpful, I would love for you again to hit that like button and also, again, to become a subscriber and join this team. Be a part of all that we're doing here. So thanks again, and as always, God's very best to you.